Hey there, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brain's player too. Like most people, my blood is red, my mini wheats are frosted, and I'm a huge sucker for adorable videos of unlikely animal buddies on the internet. There's something incredible about seeing two different creatures working together in the wild for each other's mutual good. Without words, they found a way to survive by helping one another. There's a metaphor in there, something about world peace, maybe? I digress. The point is, seeing creatures that are so different from each other work together is heartwarming. There aren't a ton of games that explore symbiotic relationships to any extent, which is one of the reasons Pikmin stands out. In Pikmin, you're Captain Olimar, a tiny alien who crash lands on a strange planet and has only 30 days to find all the pieces of his broken spaceship before he dies horribly of air deprivation. Just some real, light-hearted Nintendo fun here, you know? To accomplish this, you have to rely on strange creatures known as Pikmin. If that's all it was, then I'd be hard-pressed to call it a symbiotic relationship. More like slave labor, right? But as it turns out, the Pikmin are nearly extinct, because they're apparently not too smart and can't survive in their own environment without something else to lead them, like a bunch of sheeple transfixed by the latest celebrity iteration of an already tired reality show format. Or something. Anyway, what the Pikmin need is you. Hurling hapless Pikmin into harm's way does seem a bit antithetical to the theme of mutual good, but I assume that their lives would be even worse if Olimar weren't around, ordering them into battle with a bunch of grub dog bulborbs. Still, it made me curious about actual symbiotic relationships, some real life examples, how they work, and how they evolved in the first place. I have a feeling tiny spacemen aren't involved, but maybe they are. They're probably not. Did you know that you are in a symbiotic relationship? Yeah, you better update your Facebook status. In fact, you're in several, with both plants and animals. Whoa, you player! For example, agricultural varieties of corn can't grow on their own, because over time, they've lost the ability to expose their fruiting structure. That sounds gross, it just means that their sheath doesn't open on its own, and its seeds don't separate easily. They're symbiotically reliant on you, and we really enjoy eating them, so relationship. Domesticated dogs and cats, too, rely on humans for survival, and in turn, they give us animal videos to put on the internet. And lifelong companionship, I guess, but mostly the videos. The number and variety of symbiotic relationships between other creatures is pretty astounding. You've got oxpecker birds riding zebras to pick ticks off their skin and warn them of approaching danger. You've got goby fish and snapping crabs working together to build a den, the crab doing the lifting while the fish guards its blind buddy. And you've got three-toed sloths climbing down out of the safety of the tree canopy to poop on the ground, so their buddies, the moths that live in their fur, can lay their eggs in said poop. Yeah, animals are weird, but isn't that cool? There is actually more than one type of symbiosis. The kind we're generally thinking of when we talk about symbiotic relationships is mutualism, both species receiving benefits from the relationship. But there's communalism, in which one organism benefits from the relationship while the other isn't really affected much one way or the other. And there's parasitism, which, as you might imagine, involves one organism benefiting in a big way while the other is hurt. There's also facultative symbiosis, in which both parties benefit, but it's more of a nice to have. They'd both be fine without each other, too. Captain Olimar might seem to be getting more out of the relationship with the Pikmin. After all, he gets to not die of asphyxiation on the alien planet. But their relationship seems closer to obligate symbiosis, a type that means the organisms are essentially relying on each other to not die. Without Olimar, the Pikmin would probably just march off a cliff, lemming style. The game lemmings, not the actual animals. The idea that they run off cliffs in mass is an urban legend from a 1950s Disney nature documentary. It's a fun bonus fact for you. So, how do symbiotic relationships start? It's a compelling and complicated question, and it's one that evolution deniers frequently bring up as an argument against evolution. As complex as multicell organisms are, how could they have simply evolved to cooperate with each other naturally? Well, the answer to that is because that's how natural selection works. See, some animals are born with traits that make them better suited to an environment. In areas with significant population pressure, which is a term for circumstances that make survival more difficult, you're even more likely to see organisms with better traits surviving. 
If an organism is able to take advantage of another organism in order to do that, they've got an even better chance. It's believed that most symbiotic relationships begin as facultative, but over time, as natural selection continually gave the thumbs up to those organisms' way of life, the cooperation became much more mandatory. In fact, many scientists believe in a theory called symbiogenesis, which suggests that symbiosis is the key to complex life existing on this planet. Without cooperation, extinction could be the only outcome. This might be a little out there, and maybe it is in some respects, but some people even hold to the idea that the Earth itself is a living organism existing in symbiosis with all the creatures on its surface. It's called the Gaia Hypothesis, and if it sounds a little new agey, well, yeah, I get that. In fact, when it was first developed in the 1970s, it was received with a lot of hostility by the scientific community. But now it's studied in some disciplines like geophysiology and earth system science, and some of its principles have been adopted in the fields of biogeochemistry and systems ecology. It provides an explanation for the fact that the temperature, water and food levels, atmosphere, and other vital ingredients for life tend to hang closely to the stable mid-ranges, despite seeing fluctuations over time. Plus, one of the most commonly accepted definitions of life holds that for something to be considered alive, it must be able to reproduce. While we haven't walked on another planet yet, we're rapidly approaching the point where we could begin colonizing another planet, thereby creating a cute little baby Earth. In this analogy, we are the seeds being spread to create the next generation of planet. Yeah, okay, maybe that's a stretch, but it's cool to think about, and it highlights humankind's acknowledgement that symbiosis is such a vitally important part of life on this planet. Plus, it's a good reminder that we have a responsibility to care for the planet. If not, I wouldn't be surprised if the Earth decided to chuck us at an invading Bulborb Olimar style. Hey, thanks for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and like this video, and check out some of our other videos here. Got an idea for a game or topic to cover? Drop us a comment below, and don't forget to keep on playing.